everybody doing today i am your host nikki p here with my lovely wife and co-host lizzie on the year round tree well hello there christmas all year cast yeah um <laughs> so i'm sitting here and i'm enjoying some chocolate milk and cream cheese mint cookies nice they're my favorite uh, one of my favorites. I'm gonna be honest. I love all Christmas cookies. Yeah, they're they're, and they're, they're nice and festive with the red and green. I like it. And uh, I'm sitting here. What do you What are you drinking today, Liz? Uh, I've got a little orange spice cider here. It's basically just orange juice and a lot of a lot of spices. Really? Yep. I've never heard of that. Yeah. You're just drinking. Is it, could you at least make it like a uh, cocktail and throw in some champagne and make it? A, I mean, you know, a spiced. Spice mimosa. mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hot, so that'd be a little weird, but I might try that next batch. <laughs> okay. Interesting. And uh, you've got a fun sweater on today. Um, I don't know where you found this. You, you look gigantic. Oh. Well, yeah. I'm it's totally. weird. It's fun because it's 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 basically, it's got like a plastic blow up on the outside of it. And like she's a Christmas tree. Pointing out of a snow globe, and there's like elves and stuff in there. Like, like here, I'm pushing her right now, and <laughs> and I'm watching the snow bounce inside the shirt. It's it's you know it's a good bounce if you you're walking. It's nice. It's, I suppose uh, it's very insulating. So it's I'm, I'm nice your and boobs cozy. Up, so there's yeah, that. there's a downside. You know, what can I do? Yeah. Anyways, uh, you you got that crazy sequined uh, red and green V neck thing going on over there. I do like sequins. Yeah. I I love the. I got to introduce our daughter to sequins. And it there. seems like something Elton John would have worn. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> you introduced. That's awesome. Yes, we've had wonderful conversations about sequins. Me and Irma. Sequins are awesome. Do you think our kid likes sequins? Oh, I mean, she likes <laughs> course shine likes and glitter sequins. and everything. So yeah, Anyways. no doubt. So. What are we talking about today, Liz? We are... I know what we're talking about. Okay, well, what are we talking about? Why don't you tell me? We're talking about Bob's Burgers, Season 7, Episode 7, Last Gingerbread House on the Left. And let me just take the time to say right now, I, I really enjoy Bob's Burgers because it's just, it's got a lot of heart, that show. Their holiday episodes are always the best. And yeah, and doubly so for the the, the holiday episodes. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about doing this one. Yeah. Anyways, so this particular episode was written by is it Nora Smith and directed by Chris Song, and it is the 114th episode of the show. Wow, nice. This is what, two years ago, I think? Okay, that makes sense. Because I okay. remember actually seeing this one. So it's probably before things get too, too crazy. So the basic premise, you, get the, you got your A and your B stories. Right. Um, your A story is that Mr. Fish Odor has conned Bob into doing a gingerbread house building competition. He does this a lot. Why, does, why is Mr. Fish Odor always like, trying to get Bob to do... Because he's a creepy, eccentric, rich guy. Random, creepy stuff for him. <laughs> <laughs> and... Linda and the kids go caroling with Teddy. Yes. As if caroling were a thing that people still did. We'll still do it, I'm sure. Somewhere, probably. I hope. Yeah. It it, it became kind of, a, kind of an issue, actually, for them. What the fact did? that people don't know how to respond to carolers anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, people don't know how to respond to people anymore. <laughs> this is Look, true. If for anyone who listens to our other podcast, Sounds Like Liberty, we did a, a great teardown on the war on Christmas music. Yeah. I don't know that I feel like there's a war on Christmas, but the music. People do not like the music, and I hate all of those people. Yeah, it's sad. So this the episode takes place a week before Christmas initially. Um, <laughs> oh, good God. Do we need to explain what poor means? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that is hilarious. My favorite, my favorite joke in the movie. Oh, my God. It's because the whole thing starts off with they're trying. The whole, yeah, the premise is they're trying to get gifts for the kids. Right. And they don't know what to do. Um, the, uh, <laughs> and the kids, like, it's always, he hands, like, I guess, Lu- Louise hands dad a binder of yeah. the gifts that she wants. And he's just like, Linda, do we have to explain to the kids what poor means? 
<laughs> like I would never have uh, dreamed it in in my wildest dreams as a kid of making my list. I think the closest the closest thing that we would do is as kids we'd take like the Sears catalog. Oh well, yeah, and you and could, like circle star, the things you want. Yeah, and, I, I probably did and that it was once a, or twice. The wish list catalog or whatever it is. Right, right, and you know, you know, you were probably gonna get like ten percent of those things. I, what is it? I think, it, 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 is it like one of her comebacks? Like, <laughs> Christmas is for closers. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> please. Oh god, yeah. Anyways, so. <sighs> I'm sorry. This is just so funny. Naughty, naughty mud. Ooh, that's. There, Gene has names for Coco, and he calls Coco naughty mud. I mean, the puns are uh, thick in this one, uh, as as usual. I don't. Did I didn't even notice? Was there a burger pun in this? Uh, episode? the away in the mango burger. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's amazing. Yep, that is amazing. <laughs> I'm like writing down like stuff. I'm like, what? I, I don't even know what this means. Okay, so I'm, I, mean, I, I am terrible at writing notes. Okay. I'm, half of them are garbage. That's notes. awesome. All right, the, there's a great song. What is there? What is the great song in the in the movie the episode? Liz, you can't spell Christmas without us. Which you absolutely can, but it's yeah, it's heartening. Cause you and us Linda not is not the brightest person. No, and I do love that about her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a whole song. <laughs> that eventually shows up in the show as as shows with Lauren Bouchard tend to uh tend to have songs show up. Yeah. <laughs> There's that, that fun moment where Teddy says, You can think of me as your caroling dad if you want to. <laughs> Teddy's Teddy's like he is practically part of the family at this point because he just He's keeps, so creepy and I love keeps him. inserting himself into family events. <sighs> All of them, like there's like weddings and stuff. It's I think. just like a weird theme on the show, and he's he's just a guy that eats at the counter at their diner, basically. No, Teddy's family. I mean, like he's been at enough holiday celebrations. He's well, yeah, now guy. literally they went and like ruined his apartment because he was a hoarder. Yeah, yeah, this is true. Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Teddy is probably one of my favorite characters. Um, so yeah, yeah, you go through this whole thing. Like the actual narrative of the story is that. So they're going out caroling and nobody cares about caroling. Yeah. And like basically no one's interested. And Bob is getting harassed and just pissed on because the reason Fish Odor invited him to do the – to be in the competition is because – oh, excuse me. I'm tired. Um, it's because he thinks he's going to lose. He wants him to be a ringer to throw it because – Fish odor loses every year. Right. And since they're creepy old guy, rich guys, they have creepy old rich guy traditions that make you feel like crap if you lose. Yeah. They're all pretty miserable fucking people. In there, but, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but, like, it's also weirdly heartwarming in that they literally do this every Christmas, these what, five, six guys. They have, like, a weird kind of Christmas family Yeah, they're shitty human beings, thing. but clearly they have an affinity or an affection for each other, or at the very least the event that they do. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> part of my love of this is because it totally gets to it gets to the horror movie angle real quick. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the last gingerbread house on the left is a play on the last house on the left. Which is a creepy movie. Yeah. Um, the remake or the original? I don't know anything about like the actual movies. They're pretty, I know the story of the movies. Gruesome. I've read a synopsis, but yeah, they sound it off. Yeah, I'm a horror movie guy. Yeah, and when Halloween comes around, we'll get to one of my favorites there, the there creepier you ones. There you go. Um, but Liz does not do horror movies. Uh, not if I can help it. But she can't help it now. <laughs> Honestly, you've gotten me to watch a couple of them that I liked, but and in fact, she got me to watch one. Once. Yes, yes, she I did. She wanted to watch it. It was dress porn, and I was like, please watch this movie with me. She was not ecstatic about her decision to have I, I, the movie. I did regret it eventually, yes. Um, but yeah, so Last House on the Left, it's a horrible, gruesome kind of movie. It's not as bad as I spit on your grave, but yeah. anyways. Anything in the same vein. But, just, but the idea is, so they, the la- there's this one house on the block that right, they have the in The creepy Carrollton. murder house. The creepy murder house, as it's called. <laughs> <laughs> and so the guy who answers the door is totally like the the jittery and like, 
hey guys. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, really creepy. It's like a creepier version of Frond if Frond wasn't creepy enough. Yeah. And like he answers the door with a knife. Yeah. And, also creepy. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, they, they set it up. Like it's supposed to be a creepy thing. And then, I don't know, do we want to get to the resolutions? I mean, nah, I would Wait, we, we, why, not, why not? Why later? It's like, at the end of it, like, you find out that this guy is like, oh, I probably should have taken the, the covers off the window. That yeah, probably doesn't send the best impression. Yeah, he just didn't realize he was creepy, apparently. Yeah, apparently he's super creepy and didn't realize it. But he's also obsessed with Christmas, and yes. so they go caroling. Yes, and then he they, joins, he's the only person who actually knows how the, to treat a caroler. He's the soprano in the... <laughs> you can't spell Christmas without what is, us. What is he, what is he intro, or, Ask them to come in for is it cider or cocoa? cocoa? I think, yeah, and they've been trying to get someone to give them, you know, something close. Like you used to go caroling, and people would say, "Oh, come in, have some cocoa." You know, I would never say that. I don't want people in my house. Well, a long time ago, I think because uh, why else they? would you have here we come a wassailing if people didn't used to like invite you in for wassail? What the hell's a wassail? Wassail is like a spiced cider mold drink thingy. Is this one of those weird German things? Uh, I mean, it sounds kind of German, doesn't it? Yeah, actually, I, I think the word is German and it means. You, you like tend to know that you tend to know the German like stuff. I never know what the hell's going it, on. It's it's you know old history, like eighteen hundreds kind of. I mean, not or something. Look, I'm a John McWhorter guy. I like language and stuff, but I just don't. You 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 lived in Germany or something? I did. It's true. Like I don't know what schnitzel is. It's something. The meat it's, on a stick. It's delicious. Is what it is. Not, on a stick it's not on a steak. That's just from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's just from the Red Riding Hood movie. Anyway, so yeah, he invites them in for Coco, which like they've been trying to get someone to do all night. And then they go caroling with and him because he's yeah. apparently the soprano that she's wanted. Yes. He's got the whole... So again, to to voice. my my point of the drum, I've been beating all all Christmas, which is like, hey, you know, there are people out there like that you can connect with if you are willing to like give it a shot. This has been a good year of you going out and giving it a shot, hasn't I, it? I, yes, I've actually been somewhat social, which is impressive because I'm generally semi-conscious this time of year as well. You're still generally <laughs> semi-conscious, but at least you've been <laughs> social and semi-conscious. Yes. So let's go back. And on the, the Bob front, Fish Odor finally needles him enough that he says, to hell with you, bud. I'm going to fucking go and win this thing just to spite you well because he finds out that the prize that all these well, rich a-holes are working toward is a cuddle with the newborn baby uh bear cub bear it's, it's a polar bear cub polar bear cub at the zoo do you remember what the polar bear's name was by chance i don't i don't it's cute but i don't remember what it is i don't either but yeah he's like my kids would love that and i'm gonna win it for them so that's just like the added Added schmutz to it, like his he wins it because he, to hell with fish odor, and like the stakes were if he threw it, he got rent paid for a month, right? Which you know, I'd, you know, I'd bought, he could have bought better doing. presents, but now the bear cubs on the line, that's an even better present, right? Right, absolutely. Um, and so it ends like all gingerbread contests ends with a gunfight <laughs> and them shooting each other's gingerbread houses. <laughs> Because that's how all gingerbread contests end. Apparently, that's how all gingerbread contests end. But, you know, the result of that is... Well, as the guy in the wheelchair that who's the official judge goes and judges them, wins, is, judges that Bob's wins because it's the least destroyed. <laughs> and so Bob ends up winning the, the bear cub. Yep. And then they go upstairs, and at the door are the carolers, which is... Linda, Teddy, the murder house guy, and the kids. <laughs> the murder house guy. <laughs> yeah, the murder house guy. <laughs> yes. And it, yeah, that's, it's just heartwarming in a way that only a Bob's Burgers Christmas uh, special could be. <coughs> Which is slightly ridiculous. Do you find it funny? Because I feel like there's always like some super intense element to oh, their Oh, yeah. There's always something completely off kilter about them. Like... This I've is never, I never wrong and until, very kind of scary. Well, because, well, yeah, there's the one year they get chased down by the trucker. Yes. And then last year's was a two-parter where, like, there's a, an evil creature known as the Bleakin <laughs> that the apparently bread. stole the Christmas tree and is going to steal the presents from the kids. Like, yeah. They all have, like, really creepy elements to their Christmas episodes. I'm going to have to, like, study this a little bit more. I mean, I feel like there is a certain, like morbid part of christmas though because like the most one of the most popular christmas stories is, is a ghost story the christmas carol like is that creepy it's a ghost story 
I Are mean, ghosts I, creepy? I don't really find it creepy because I've been listening to it since I was like three, but technically, you know, when you think about it, like that's kind of a part of the whole thing, I guess. I suppose. Maybe it's because it's like dark and cold and winter. Yeah, winter is pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, folks, uh, I think we're going to leave it there. This is going to be, was this, this is a, we got one more episode that's actually come out what, the day before Christmas, Christmas yeah, Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve. So please come on, come on back and join us for the Christmas Eve episode. What's, what do we, what were we talking about for Christmas Eve? Did you put it up there? Uh, I did. I can't see it. And no one can hear you when you're talking off mic. <laughs> Uh oh. Is she going to look? What is it going to be, Liz? Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, I don't think I can see. Oh, Christmas story. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. It's going to be a Christmas story because we live in Cleveland and uh, parts of that movie were filmed here. Yeah, it seemed fitting that we I've should, never gone to the Christmas story house. It's it. a little expensive. It is expensive for like a walk through a house where a yeah. movie was filmed. I can drive past Some it any time of the year. Right, and that was kind of, I think, the actual part that was in the movie, <laughs> to be honest. I don't think the interiors were really shot here. So, but what are you going to do? It's a thing. It's a Cleveland mm. thing. It is apparently a Cleveland thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll be we'll Christmas about tree that. the house. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, folks, we'll be back next week. Enjoy the holidays. It's actually the holiday right now. I'm going to enjoy saying enjoy the holidays when it's like April low. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Take it easy. I these cookies up.